Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. Tonight we're taking a look at the QSP Penguin. This is a standout budget knife for 2020, and overall I'm pretty impressed with it. So let's go ahead and get into it and figure out what makes it tick. Why the QSP Penguin? Well, that's an easy one. It's simply a good EDC knife at a great price. So here's the better question. What sets it apart at its $30 price tag? Micarta D2 tool steel and impressive action. In my opinion, it's got a whole lot of charm that manages to outweigh a few flaws. The Penguin's handle pattern is unobtrusive and not particularly notable, which is typically what you need in a budget EDC option. It's quiet and simple, but the source of its unusual likability has to be its denim micarta scales. They are textured and grippy, but still quite comfortable in hand, if a little chalky feeling, and they make up for the folder's boxy frame. However, the parrot's beak just behind the blade, which I assume is acting as a guard, is too wide and causes your hand to be positioned a little too far back from the edge. The handle overall fits into my hand all right. I have short fingers, but a wide palm, so I tend to prefer longer handles, but the penguin does fine for me. If you have larger hands, you may have to make do with a three-finger grip. Construction is solid, featuring full stainless steel liners and two stainless steel standoffs. There's a nice cutout for the liner lock, and the locking leaf has just the right amount of jimping. There are some fit and finish issues. The micarta scales do not meet the liners flush in a few areas, but I think that's forgivable for the price that QSP is asking. The D2 blade is well implemented with a nice alternating satin finish that features a horizontal grain on the flats and a vertical grain on the blade grind. D2 is a steel developed to be high in carbon and high in chromium with an added dose of cobalt, and as a result it has a higher level of toughness and edge retention, but lower resistance to corrosion relative to OS 8, a budget steel that it has largely replaced. The grind on this knife is full flat, but it widens quickly to a high shoulder, so it's not super slicey but it will perform EDC tasks competently. It's not the best for food prep due to the parrot's beak I mentioned earlier, which prevents the blade from properly meeting flat surfaces. However, the sheep's foot blade does make it great for detail cuts. The method of deployment used are the thumb studs on either side of the blade. The knife deploys fast and easy on a combination of bronze washers and Teflon discs, and it will even drop shut. Despite these classic design choices, it is a very fidgety knife, and I think it would have benefited from a front flipper, as it could have been implemented into the design quite easily. The pocket clip is a fold-over deep carry clip that anchors behind the micarta scale. It functions well, retention is medium as it comes in and out of the pocket easily, and it'll probably stay in the pocket in all situations other than hanging upside down. I wish the screws were recessed in the scale, but that's just a minor flaw. Acquiring the Penguin is not as easy as I would like, but it's still not difficult. The Micarta handle options sold out quickly on Blade HQ and are not available through other retailers at the time of this recording, but they can still be found through eBay sellers, which is where I got mine. Primary use of this knife is everyday carry. I would not consider it for hard use, but it can handle reasonable tasks. In conclusion, this knife is perfect as a simple EDC option if you just need a good knife, or as a budget beater. All right, y'all, taking down the QSP Penguin. So my initial impressions of this knife, sorry about the water stains, by the way, this is a micarta handle and it absorbs pretty much anything it gets close to. Initial impression of the knife is pretty good. Um, you guys have already seen my uh, glamour shots and all that stuff, so you have an idea of, of what I think about it. Um, but uh, Overall, I'm, 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 I'm pretty impressed by it, but I learn a lot by disassembling and reassembling. So we're going to find out um, just how well finished it is, how, how well machined it is. Um, and yeah, the only thing, you know, off the bat is I think the micarta is not, I admit, you know, it, it's almost like it's not fully stabilized. It's chalky. It's, it's just raw. And perhaps they intended it, intended it to be that way. I mean, it, it is, you know, they, they list it as denim micarta. So the intention, intention might be for it to feel raw. And I will say it, it's really comfortable. It feels nice in hand. Um, but I wish it was just a little more, 
I don't know, a little more stabilized, I guess. Anyway, enough of me going on. Let's uh, let's get into this guy. And I'm gonna guess that certainly appears to be a T8. So let's, let's take it apart here. Hope you guys are doing doing well tonight. Been having a pretty good day myself, all in all. This is a little different, you know, than what I usually do because the idea, T8, yeah, that's T8. The idea behind my channel is that, uh, oh man, that's, that's in there. The idea behind my channel is that it's kind of like, it's kind of like an individual, pro, or a, 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 an episode by episode profile on an individual knife and its role within a collection and like what it could do for you, what it does for me and, and what, you know, I think, yeah, what I think it would be good, you know, for you. Um, this is a little bit different because um, I I haven't owned this knife here. This is a new knife and I don't normally, like I'm not a cutting edge guy. I don't really keep up with, uh, with what's popular. Um, but I saw this knife on a Blade HQ video and uh, taking the pocket clip out now. These are T6 and I was just kind of impressed. I mean for the money uh, we're talking 30 bucks D2 and micarta and you know those are factors that are certainly hard to argue with. That does not, Those don't want to come out. Come on guys get out of there for me. Well, that's a problem right off the bat. All right, let's just go ahead and continue unscrewing the, the scale. And then I can probably just lift them straight out. Good news is nothing here appears to be Loctited. So uh, QSP, you get points for that. Always happy to see that nothing is being Loctited. Also T6 on these body screws. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, I was just really impressed with what was on offer here. And um, you know, if you guys have been watching my channel at all, uh, yeah, this will make things easier. Yep, so the, uh, the micarta scale comes right off. Let's see if we can pop those screws out. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what's gonna do it, no problem. All right, so these pocket clip screws I'm gonna put over here. pocket clip there. It's a pretty nicely done pocket clip, I must say. So here's my issue with the raw micarta. Look right here in the lanyard hole. You guys see how ragged that looks? I'm not a fan of that. I, I love micarta. I just like it to be stabilized with some sort of, you know, I don't know enough about making micarta handles. I would imagine you would use some form of epoxy or, uh, or glue or something to stabilize it. So I do wish they had done that. It just feels too like you know, like it's going to thread apart on you. And the other thing is, I'll tell you guys from carrying this in my pocket, if it gets around hair or lint or anything like that, it automatically just clings to this surface. So, you know, that's a negative. But again, you know, for the price point, this is very, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed for the price point. Okay, let's get this scale taken off over here. But yeah, so this is kind of cool. I do like that they did this. They provided extra screws to fill in the gaps if you want to carry it on the opposite uh, for, for whatever side that is opposite the pocket clip for you, you have extra screws to fill those gaps. That's a nice touch. Do appreciate that. It's thoughtful of them. So, um, whoop. the blade steel on offer here is D2. Um, I don't know much about QSP. They seem to have a, um, a good reputation. And I've noticed as well that uh, they they have a lot on offer, um, ranging from, I believe, this actually, no, this is not their cheapest option. I think their cheapest option is the Parrot for 20 bucks. Um, but I do know they have everything ranging from the $20 Parrot, you know, all the way up, up to uh, $200 models. So I think they're, you know, they're, they're, they have a presence, you know, that's for sure. Um, oh boy screw does not feel great and I think we are free spinning I, 
believe we are. Okay, guys. Here's what we're going to do. Hate it when that happens. That's not good. Not a fan of that. So I'm going to pop this screw back into the back spacer here. Come on. Why are you fighting me? There we go. And then I'm going to block it off with my second set of Torx bits. And we are going to try to get that screw out. Because what I do on this channel, it's uh, full takedowns. There's no... I, I try to get everything apart that I can except for lock bar stabilizers. Those are the only things that I don't only things that I don't mess with. Actually here. You guys might hear my dog drinking water over here, so I apologize for that. Alright, so I got my second set of torques in place here, and now we are gonna come on. There we go. We're gonna try to screw unscrew this guy now. Jeez, stop fighting me. Come on. Come on. God, I don't like that feeling. <sighs> that is frustrating, guys. Alright. We're gonna take let's take a look at that screw. Hopefully I'm not stripping it, but no, it's fine. We're going to take a different tack because I can't get it to grip. This is odd. Um, let's pop the pivot out. There we go. Get these out of the way. And okay. Let's lift our liner out. As I was saying, though, in regard to the D2 blade, um, so these are, no, they're not. Okay. In regard to the D2 blade, um, you know, there's been some questionable sort of uh, things that have happened about uh, in regard to um, D2 coming from China. You know, it's always a bit of a question. Um, but as I was saying earlier, QSP has a good reputation and... Uh, you know, and there's also, um, wow, how is that in there? That is not wanting to come out. And it, it's not, it does not appear to be D-shaped. It just appears to be very much Loctited in place. We're going to get it out. I'm not, I don't accept a stuck a stuck uh, standoff. Come on you, you're coming out. You don't you don't have a choice in the matter. There we go. Oh, yep, that did it. It was just really stuck. It had some had some Loctite on it. Um anyway, yeah, so I'm I could I'm I'm all over the place to get today, guys. Um there's our uh, our stop our stop pin as well. Ah, uh, we have bronze washers against Teflon. Big fan of that. Love to see that. I think that results in a, a, a very nice action. Very thin Teflon washers. Okay. And those are on that side. And then on this side we have these. Let's see. And the Teflon's hugging the blade. All right. Now I still have to solve this problem here. Standoff is killing me. Here we go guys, got it. Okay, finally, okay. Boy, that took some effort. All right. Okay, there's our second standoff. Second screw. Uh, third screw, I should say. Fourth body screw. All right, guys. 
Um, so that wasn't so bad, except for that one stuck standoff, that one stuck screw. Um, so let's get everything kind of organized and we are gonna have our exploded view here. Sometimes I've had that happen before and I always feel so goofy when I'm sitting there trying to figure out how the hell am I gonna unscrew this free spinning, unscrew this screw from this free spinning standoff. There's always a bunch of goofy crap that you have to do to try to make it work. All right guys, so here's our exploded view. All right guys, so let's get these parts cataloged. We have our two stainless steel liners, two uh, micarta uh, liner, uh, uh, scales, our D2 blade. Let's have a good look at that, by the way. One thing that's nice is you guys can see they have a, uh, a two-tone finish on it. It's um, satin, satin polished in this direction on the flats and satin polished, uh, or satin finished, I should say, downward on the uh, on the grind that's pretty nice all right and we've got two bronze washers two uh, Teflon washers oh, I just noticed something that Teflon's not it's kind of dirty and it's kind of uh, kind of rugged looking not the end of the world that's not a big deal but just thought I'd point it out okay two Teflon washers two bronze washers our pivot, our pivot screw, our uh, stop bar, two backspacers, four body screws, uh, our, our pocket clip, our pocket clip screws, and, uh, and yeah, that's it, guys. Um, all right, so let's get into the cleanup here. So I always just use a spray bottle of soap and water and a microfiber cloth. D2, you know, you want to be a little careful with. Um, it's not, like, crazy. Uh, 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 prone to corrosion but it will corrode if you don't take care of it um, but you know it's it's not hard to take care of it just make sure you, you keep it dry that's all you just don't want to leave it sitting around wet it's not like 1095 or anything like that so these canvas <laughs> these micarta scales they're gonna get darker as I as I clean them uh, and they milled out a nice little pocket here for the uh, for the uh, locking leaf on the liner. Um, so that's worth pointing out. I'm actually, you know what guys, I'm actually gonna oil these because I think it'll just feel a lot better. All right. <laughs> Is the dryer going off? Staying busy. Staying busy during these crazy days. Let's get these washers cleaned up. Um, man, when I initially received this, the action was absurd. Just absurd. Uh, no blade play. Um, up or down, side to side, nothing at all. But the, the, the lockup was great, and the action was just unreal. Um, now, they had it oiled quite a lot, so. Um, but hey, man, I mean, if you can get, I was getting a drop, it was a drop shut action on bronze washers. I mean, that's impressive to me. I'll give them credit for that, absolutely. So we'll see once I get done here if we're gonna wind up with that, and I, I think that we probably will. All right, there we go. And let's clean off the pivot here a little bit. That'll do. And Lightly clean off the Teflon. It doesn't really need it too much. This one does, though. This one's kind of ragged looking. Oop. All right, there we go, guys. So let's go ahead and get into the rebuild here. Let's start off. Let's see here getting the liner side back into place, the liner lock side. All right, let's pop the backspacers in. You know what, let me clean the backspacers off as well because that one backspacer had a ton of Loctite on it. There we go. Uh, you know, and um, I've been saying some, not detrimental things, but just 
you know, it's the thing is at the end of the day, this is a thirty dollar knife, and for that amount of money, I, uh, so far, I think it's quite impressive. It's a simple design. The construction is, you know, I'm, I'm bitching about the lack of D-shaped standoffs, but I mean, the construction's solid. So let me grab my Loctite here. I'm moving a little bit prematurely here, but I wanted to go ahead and get the, the scales back on here. There we go. I don't need that much on the bottom of the screw there. Just make things easier for me. Come on. There we go. Oh! Why do I always fall for that? You know that's going to happen. You got to hold your thumb over it. Come on, bro. There we go. It's embarrassing the number of times that I that I do that. Alright. Some locks on it here. This side is ready to rock. So let's get our pivot in place. And we do have a D-shaped pivot. So that's nice. Um, yeah, let's see. The D-shape is on the inside here. Yeah, so I mean, you know, they, they uh, they're not being lazy. I'm not, I'm not saying that for sure. But I will say that the rat series for the same price uh, you know you can get you can get the rat 2 and d2 and it's well no you know actually scratch that the rat 2 and d2 I think is closer to 40 so you know 10 bucks more but it has d-shaped standoffs thank you very much all right get our blade in place Oh, stop bar first. Let's see if that needs to be cleaned, but I think it looks fine. All right, we got our stop bar in. There we go. Get a little bit more oil here. Ooh, not that much. Easy now. Easy does it. I do, uh, I do really like the look of this denim micarta. I mean, I think it looks great. Wait, hang on a minute. I need to put the uh, Teflon washer on there first. Come on. I'm never going to get that off now. Here we go. Just pop that out a little bit. Come on. There we go. Okay. All right. Coming right apart on me, aren't you? There we go. All right. Back to business. Get that, <laughs> that somewhat raggedy Teflon washer in place. Again, with the Teflon, that's less of a concern as, as it would be with the Phosphor Bronze, but still, I, I, I like everything to be neat. All right. Not that much. Just a dab of oil here. Okay. There we go. Everything's popping in nicely. I'm not forgetting anything. Let's close this boy up. Let's close this old boy up here. Okay, get these body screws on first.
All right. Ooh, very nice. We do have blade play, so let's tighten her up. Still some blade play. Let's try that. Little bit of blade play. Just a hair, we're getting there. No play. Ooh, beautiful action. Centering is, oh, man, that is quite close to dead on. Uh, let me, it's always hard for me to hold this up properly, but I think that's pretty damn close. It may be a bit to the right, but boy. Whew. All right, guys, nice, fast action. Little swing shot. If you're into that sort of thing, yeah, that's a nice action. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do now uh, is get the pocket clip back in place. One thing, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but the pocket clip design, I mean, I, it, it's kind of neat. I appreciate it. it. It slides into place like that. And you've got the pocket on either side, so that's a nice touch. Um, I, I think it would have meant a little bit more to me if the screws were recessed, as, as you know, everything else here is countersunk, but these screws are not. Uh, so that's a bummer. Um, I don't know why they chose to do it that way. Because you, you definitely feel those screws going into the pocket. And to me, it, uh, it's like if you're going to go to the trouble of doing that. Anyway, still, again, this is a $30 knife. And for a $30 knife, uh, this thing's, you, eh, you can't complain about it. it. It's pretty good. This is one of those knives that, you know, once you learn the, the, uh, the quirks of it, Similar to the Kaiser, um, the Tangram Santa Fe was another one where I'm like, man, why am I buying expensive knives? I mean, I know why. It's because there's some, you know, the details are there. But if you just need a good knife, my lord, I mean, this is one of the best times to be alive. You have so many options. I remember when I was first getting into the hobby, which is long before I started making the YouTube videos, but um, the Ontario Rat 2 was everybody's like, oh, that's, you know, best budget knife ever. And now, wow, things have really changed. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of knives that have, uh, a lot of budget knives that have been, you know, influenced by, say, the TRM Atom, TRM Neutron, you know, those great little knives, and they're saying, well, you know, we can do something that's close. It gets you maybe 80% of the way there. We can make it on a budget, so I can respect that. All right, guys, we're almost done here. Just getting our uh, reverse pocket clip screws in place. And then we are gonna do, uh, we're gonna oil, come on. We're gonna oil these handles because I think, I, I really do think that would improve. Whoa, mama, that would improve the uh, feel of the handles quite a bit. There we go. All right, guys. So the QSP Pelican. Uh, man, I'm I'm impressed. I mean, that action is stellar. And I can I can middle finger flick it, and this is just a thumb stud knife. Oh boy, that's something. Uh, not a fan of the logo. <laughs> I am not, but uh, still, man. I do like the blade shape a lot too. Um, I do wish they had dropped the blade lower. I don't like having this this nub in here uh, with without the blade being longer. I feel like it, I mean I understand it's preventing you from sliding up onto the blade, but I feel like it would make even more sense if the blade came down to the same level as this guard. I think that would make a lot of sense. Like if you want an example of what I'm talking about, 
Take a look at the Kaiser Sheepdog. It kind of does that, I feel like. Anyway, so let's oil these scales real quick, which uh, genius, you should have not put in the pocket clip on before you oiled the scales. But you know what? That's okay. Ooh, too much, way too much. All right, that's better. That'll do. Okay, so there's the after. It's definitely a darker effect. Dry that off a bit. There you go. See, that, that feels much nicer to me. And that's gonna dry out a bit too. All right, now let's see if I can do this. There we go. <laughs> that is one way to do it, isn't it? So the next thing you would want to do is probably run it under some running water just to get the excess oil off the top of the surface. So I'm gonna go do that next. All right, guys, so after running it under some water, that's about what I wanted right there. That is perfect. Um, feels much better. It's not quite as chalky. It still is a little bit. It has a bit of that sort of chalk feeling to it, but overall it is quite a bit better than how it was when I started. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what the way that I typically oil my car to mineral oil on a cloth, wipe it down, get the excess off under the tap, and there you go. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, yeah, um, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, the couple things, I, like, you know, uh, it would have been better if those standoffs were done properly. But other than that, um, this thing came apart simple, in, in a simple manner. It went back together easily, and everything stayed in place. It's got great centering. A um, little, little tiny bit off, but again, $30. Always just keep telling yourself that. you got to remember that. For 30 bucks, my goodness, this is something. Um, so uh, yeah, guys, overall, if, if you're on a budget, even if you're not on a budget, even if you want a new knife to add to your collection, I think this is worthy. Um, I use knives like this. For me, it's the Kaiser Tangram. Oh, uh, Lord. The Tangram Santa Fe. This is a knife that I use when, sometimes with my job, I have to work on different locations. And uh, this is my go-to knife for that. Um, and you know, the thing is, if I lose it, not a big deal, I can replace it for 30 bucks. And I won't, you know, it won't be like losing a, I do actually, this has a, a some sentimental value for me, but still, it won't be like losing some of my other knives, you know, my, my higher value, or uh, higher price knives. Um, I think this fills that role as well. Um, and, at the, and at the same time, it looks cool. I mean, this is black G10. I mean, blue denim micarta, come on. I mean, it looks great, and it feels great, so. Lord, guys, I'll talk all night. I recommend it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, feel free to leave any comments, questions, anything like that. Uh, you know where to leave them, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys soon.